time now for our Monday NHL Insider from the Bob McCallum Podcast, former executive producer of Hockey Night in Canada. Welcome back, John Shannon. How are you? Matt, Blake, I'm great. And can I do a blatant plug for our podcast? Of sure. Course. Harry Sinden today. Mm, Harry Sinden, wow. Gosh. Um, yeah. And, 50 and, years and later, and right? I, I, w- yeah, this is, uh, today is the day of game seven, I believe, uh, 50 years ago in uh, at the Luzhniki Ice Palace in uh, downtown Moscow, but uh, I haven't. I've seen lots of interviews with players, uh, and we were good, lucky enough to get Harry Sinden from his house in Boston. So it, it's, it's, ninety mm. years old is Harry Sinden. Yeah. How, how did he sound? Well, I'll tell you what. He remembered every story and every uh, moment of September of nineteen seventy-two, and and. He, he does. Does he sound ninety? Sure, but I tell you what, it was a fun listen. It was fun to do, and mm. you know, you could. Uh, I was a high school kid. I could finally tell somebody all my frustrations about his goaltender choices. So <laughs> <laughs> between Dryden and Espo, let me guess: the referees in Montreal are still crooked all these years <laughs> later, right, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, he will it, take it, that it one fun. through fun. his nineties yeah. till his eternal life. I'm sure. Um, uh, oh, Marvel stuff. Um, well, yesterday the Vancouver Canucks and Calgary Flames from Rogers Arena here on television. As we know, the arena is going through some renovations, John, and your eagle eye as a former television producer picks up now. Picks yeah. up out there yeah, about just, last night. Uh, Tell us about it. Just a, a little bit of a camera angle different. Um and uh basically the cameras have been moved up from I guess the private box level to the first row of the upper balcony. Um and changed the angle a little bit, but uh not noticeable. And so, and in the end, I think it'll probably be better for fans that if the Canucks get into one of those great playoff runs, there won't be people jumping up and standing in the way of the camera angles because it's uh, by by moving them up six to eight feet and changing the angle just a little bit. Uh, there's nobody in the way, so mm. uh, I I thought uh, yeah. it looked uh, it looked pretty good. That that's a huge investment in it. I'm usually sensitive to that. St- I'm usually sensitive to that stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't pick up on it at all. No, yeah, I, no, and I, 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 and um, I did. That is. That is the answer I'm sure that the architects and the Canucks wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, exactly. absolutely. We were just reminiscing a little before uh, we started recording here that the old Joe Lewis Arena, oh. the old Great Western Forum, so many overtime goals, the big wide shot that you're accustomed to spoiled because people jump on up. And there you go. You get the backs of heads instead of uh, well, Joe, uh, the, the Joe the shot that you're used to seeing. Maddie, the Joe television was an afterthought. You know, here was here was sure. uh, you know the replacing the Detroit Olympia, uh, supposed to be one of the great arenas of the modern time in downtown Detroit, um, and everything about mm. television was an afterthought. Where the where the announcers should uh, sat, where the cameras went, it was a disaster from day one until the day it closed, and I was not one to l- lament. The great history of Joe Lewis Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Just everything about the arena. The visitor's locker room was absolutely oh. puny. And you know, even the Red Wings locker room was puny. Uh, the media meal area happened under the uh, stands there in the hall, basically in the concourse. It was, you know, just everything about the Joe was different. Little Caesar's mm-hmm. Pizza, though, was really yes. good because the Yelichs oh, had to yes. make sure the Little Caesar's Pizza <laughs> was perfect for the media. That's true. You couldn't go five paces at Joe Lewis without being offered a free slice of Little Caesars yeah. pizza. Uh, let's go from uh, television to radio. Brendan Bachelor and Randeep Janda did the game last night. We still haven't heard a um, announcement out of Sportsnet and the Vancouver Canucks about their audio platform this year and what's going to happen. But I guess we got a pretty good hint last night. You tell us uh, what's going to be the deal with the Canucks on radio or the Canucks on audio. Well, this season. I, I, I think, you know, I had been told uh, about a month ago that, that, you know, that both Rogers and the Canucks were making one last gasp effort uh, to get at least a one-year deal done. Um, and, and I wondered whether last night would even be televised or would they even simulcast John and John uh, on the radio in the short term. But it certainly sounds like there's something coming that would... Uh, would get a a regular season package 
uh, back on the radio in Vancouver. You, you know, um, radio rights have not to, do not have near the value um, in the National Hockey League uh, as they once did. But uh, I will tell you right now, there are the four teams in Western Canada probably had get more value out of their radio rights than any of the other 28 teams in the National Hockey League, simply because of time zones and because of the passion of the hockey fans. So I, I suspect that we'll, we will see a Rogers deal done uh, at least for one year in the short term. I, you know, why, why would, I and mean, it's too late now, but why in the summer wouldn't the Canucks have said, you know what, we can sell a digital stream just as easily. We'll make just as much money doing that. We're the Canucks. Like, who, who are you going to sp- spend more money on if you're uh, a business that gets a phone call from a radio station or from an NHL club? I, I'd be more willing to spend on the NHL club than the radio station if I'm that business. I, I'm surprised they didn't just use this moment as an opportunity to wade into the digital sphere. Well, you're right, um, but I mean, I don't have to tell you guys about being on the cutting edge, and the risk of being on the cutting yeah. edge. Um, you I know, guess. It, it, it's you know, and again, the Canucks are the one. I mean, maybe even the one team in the NHL that are conscious of drive time. You know, if you can get in your car at four Pacific time and pick up the Canuck game. Um, how many people will pick it up on the AM dial or the FM dial if it goes there, or how many people will pick it up digitally in their car? And that's where the driving force of revenue would come from, uh, is the drive sure. time. And now that the pandemic's, I guess, I read it. I read the government declared it over today, so that's good. Um, oh, that's yeah. fabulous. Okay. <laughs> Tell us so, a couple of our employees. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so from from that perspective, you know, rush hours are back and traffic is back, and so you're going to want to make sure you can deliver your content as easy as possible to the consumer while they're sitting in their car. And I, I, I suspect that's the one thing. But we're, we're going through it. We're seeing this in the CFL. I know Hamilton had a, has gone digital completely. There are, I think, at least now four or five teams in the NHL, uh, New Jersey, Los Angeles, uh, San Jose. Um, they've gone digital, uh, and uh, there's no reason to think that in, in the long term, uh, that a team like the Canucks will, won't go long, won't go digital as well. Now Hamilton, of course, was by choice because Bell Media shuttered the uh, all sports talk radio station. No, they had changed, a deal. They, they actually formats, had it. They changed they, formats on them. Yeah, but they actually had it. They, they had a deal with with the local chorus station there. Okay. They had one ready to go, and they, but they they elected to con, to control the content mm-hmm. and quite frankly grow the content uh, because it's just more than games now. When you go mm-hmm. to the when you go to the Ticat app, mm-hmm. you get a ton of content, mm-hmm. a ton of content. Well, uh, speaking of course, John, a- answer me this. Someone told me that the radio rights are now in the ballpark of what NW was paying 20 years ago, that they basically come full circle back to that sort of price point. Uh, price yeah. point. Um, believe Chorus does wow. the Oilers and the Jets, if I'm not mistaken, in Western Canada. They do. It, it, yeah, yeah. And, would there and, be a world, and, John, where NW gets back in here uh, with the Vancouver Canucks as a legacy station after this year? Uh, it, it would be total supposition on my part, Matt, but I would not be surprised to see sure. all four teams in Western Canada in the next two to three years on chorus. Even Calgary. Well, that's the best chance for them to get uh, the most earballs. If you will, um, what? Well, on, wait, hold on, on. Product, hold on. Their drums, oh, hold on. rear drums, yeah. Blake. Ear ear balls, Blake. It's, exactly. a, it's a, our 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 coworkers, uh, uh, John. We have an errors and omissions segment, <laughs> and I'm putting him on it, sir. Just so you know, I will not stand for that on our our partner show. uses it so much. It's uh, infiltrated my uh, oh, vernacular. My um, but but those legacy stations, the like. The, the last radio stations standing in Western Canada will probably be those stations, right? So you might as well go to where the last bastion of, of listenership is. Well, and and, uh, and and Chorus has done an, an excellent job with the product in Edmonton from a content perspective. Uh, and, and in Winnipeg, the same thing. They have, uh, I mean, when we, when we talk about they own the rights to the games, both of those stations produce five to six hours a day around hockey in addition to the game when you when you consider noon two hour noon shows when you consider two hour pregame shows an hour postgame shows 
Uh, they're in they're in the ballpark of producing a ton of content, shoulder programming, if you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, in addition to the games. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of the NHL teams you mentioned moved to um, digital platforms. You know, New Jersey, San Jose, L.A., very competitive markets, right? Very difficult to get on the radio and catch anybody's attention with all the other sports uh, that are going on there. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I know we got other stories, but like New Jersey, for instance, you know, has always bought mm-hmm. time. Bought time sure. to put their radio sure. signal yeah. on the yeah. um, Well, I mean, even the Rangers, it's hard to get, uh, you know, like a, a, there's a few the sports teams. have been on WFAN there's a few for years, teams in but, New York. you know, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a super competitive uh, marketplace. Uh, John, Ilya McKayev left the game last night. We don't know how serious it is or not, but you've seen a lot more of him over the last three years living in Toronto and going to Leafs games than we have here on the West Coast. We know he's a fantastic skater, but tell us more about the player you've come to know watching him for the last few years. And, and a competitive guy. Uh, and and I, I will tell you that this summer, even, even late in the regular season last year, the Maple Leafs knew with the cap problems that they were having, that the league was creating, they knew that they could not match the money that McKay's talent was going to get him. Um, it was it was just a fact of life. They 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 made one quick sojourn to try to sign him, and then it just it just was not going to work. This is a guy that it, it, that in the end, um, well, I don't think he'll get very much power play time, but he's a good penalty killer. Uh, he, as I said, very competitive. You talked about his speed. Uh, he does have finish. Uh, I I think with uh, with you know with the the Russian mafia that they're creating in Vancouver. Uh, I think there's going to be a ton of success for all three of those guys when, with, when you consider Kuzmenko and Paul Colson as well. And I, I think it's a smart move um, to, to do it. And I think, I think Mikheyev will end up being a fan favorite. I think because of, because of his breakout speed, uh, he, mm. will just, he will leave a lot of fans breathless at the arena when they realize what he can do uh, with his legs. And then he has, he has the ability to finish. So he's going to be fun to watch for the Canucks. The Canucks are hoping, it sounds like, that uh, teams get in trouble somewhere around the league uh, on the defensive side that might uh, shake free somebody. Are, are, you, are you hearing any grumblings about uh, general manager so-and-so being in some trouble uh, as they prognose where they're, uh, you know, get a prognosis of where they're going to be like a week from now, two weeks from now before opening night? I think everybody's been really tight-lipped about it simply because they they don't want to tip any knowledge one way or the other. I just think it's too early in camp yet. The couple of guys that I have talked to um, that are below the cap <laughs> are watching with interest those teams that are still above the Same cap. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Say, and, and just yeah. saying, okay, where can we pounce? Let's keep an eye open. Let's keep a, you know, let's keep our ear balls open. You know, I mean, let's... Uh, <laughs> there you go. See? <laughs> Once it gets in, you can't get it out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but let, it, And so I, I just think it's it's just a little too early in camp to be, even though there are games underway to, for people to be doing it, but you know darn well that there are managers that are playing telephone tag, trying to, hey, <laughs> I need to I need to fix this. Can you help me fix this? That's and, right. And yeah. we're going to see it. We are going to see it before the, the middle of October for sure. Yeah, uh, you do wonder about Vegas over the cap. Of course, they have Laner on LTIR. They got the issue with Nicholas Hag, the defenseman. So uh, um, you do wonder whether there's going to be some transactions there from the yeah, Golden Knights. Nick, God knows Nick, Nick there are was, no strangers to Nick, transactions. Yeah. Nick Hague's not one of those guys. Nick Hague, you know, because he's he's still at the time in his career where he's controllable. Mm-hmm. Um, I still, you know, he and and the young defenseman with the Maple Leaf, Sandine, same thing. They're they're going to mm-hmm. try to squeeze their last dollar uh, out of him in order to get him signed. They will get him signed because they can control him for not only this year, but probably his arbitration year as well. So you know, you've got yeah. somebody for at least two seasons. Yeah, um, I, I was going to ask you about Sandine. Uh, he was my next question. Uh, marvelous stuff, uh, John. Thank you for this. Uh, we will keep our eyes. And ears open mm-hmm. over the next well, seven days. I did not. Yeah. I did not create the ear balls. I am just, you know, trying to reflect uh, what I hear from people. carrying the flag. Thank mm-hmm. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> wow. Until next Monday, John.